Alright guys, welcome to another episode of Advice with Alex and Friends Podcast. I'm your host Alex and I'm joined by amazing people today. Thank you, my name's Alex Reeds. Um, and we'll get into you as well, but where can people find you? Um, you can predominantly find me on Instagram, at Alex Reeds. Um, I'm around on Twitter, but I'll explain that mm-hmm. throughout the conversation. Mm-hmm. But if you want to find me like living my best life and <laughs> dancing on uh, my stories, then yeah, uh, you can find me on at Alex Reeds on Instagram. And of course, you can follow the podcast at Advice with Alex on Instagram and Twitter. And you can follow me personally at from Alexandra X on Instagram and Twitter as well. So um, I'm going to start off by saying I've never met an Alex I didn't like. So whenever I see someone called Alex, I'm like... It's the name of champions. Yeah, it, it, it really is. It really is the name of champions. But doesn't it ever like bug you out sometimes when you're like, oh, hi, Alex from Alex. Alex, it's Alex it just, it's, it's really, it's really weird, isn't it? Like sometimes I'm like, okay, so you're, like it's the first time you're actually using someone else's name that is your own name. Yeah, at the same time. yeah. No, I've, I've gotten used. I feel like I've gotten used to it from work. So, for example, oh, there's um, so many Alexes in life. Isn't in yeah, yeah. Even like it happens all the time. So in like. I work part time in a school as okay, well. Yeah. So one of the other teachers, he's also called Alexandra, yeah. and they're like, Alex, I'm like, okay, yeah. not me. Yeah. It happens like how many times in a day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I'm on the tube and then someone's shouting Alex. I mean, <laughs> no one's ever, no one's shouting my name like that on no tube, okay? But um, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, it's a very common name. But yeah. it is a name of champions, though. For real, for real, for real. Never met a mad one. Mm, if you're yes. preg- <laughs> yeah no and if if they are then we rebuke that name from yeah, you or your your fate exactly use your middle name yeah don't do it yeah for real um but you are a podcaster slash writer I am a podcaster writer journalist mm-hmm. content creating mm-hmm. somebody mm-hmm. yeah that's me that is me yeah that's a beautiful thing to be like actually do you know what um, speaking of that I saw um you know that whole, that phrase, jack of all trades, mm. master of none. I yeah. didn't know that there was a bit after it. Ooh, what's the bit which after? Which actually it? says, um, okay, so if I say it in, in its entirety, jack of all trades, master of none, but better than a master of one. Oh. I was like, oh, well, that makes that, me feel so much better about myself. It, that makes it that much better. Because I, yeah. I had this issue thinking about this every day. I was thinking, all right, is it better to focus on one particular thing than it is to then to do several things, mm. do several things well. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. you're splitting the energy across. Yeah. Um, yeah, and this just kind of like sums up all of that. You've so, been doing it right all this time. Doing it right all this time. See, let me go and Google that, that nursery rhyme when I get back <laughs> yeah. home. Don't let people with their half truths exactly. make you feel some type put it of on way. My wall. Yeah. yeah, man. Mum, look, I'm doing bare things. Better than being a master of one. Of one. No, it's true. I feel like you in this day and age, you have to spread mm-hmm. yourself out in order to make money, in order to get yourself out there. Absolutely. Um, but also to grow as a person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. 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 You need to... The thing is, we're in a time where we have to upskill mm. and do more than one thing to kind of like... Not necessarily we have to, but it, it's beneficial for yeah, us yeah. to do more than one thing. Um, whether that means just learning or expanding on what you're already good at or just challenging yourself to do something new. Mm. And I think that's a, that's a really important thing that I think a lot of people in our generation are kind of embracing now. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you know, instead of being masters at one thing early, they tend to spend a lifetime being mastering it across mm. several amounts of time. Yeah. Yeah. Just it, to say that they can do it. Yeah. Well. I think the average time it takes for you to become a master of something is 10 years. But when I think of, for example, <laughs> with my job, I'm like, I've, I've hit my ceiling, as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. So, you know, yeah. what else? Psychologically, you move past that. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's just that you're just there now. Yeah. So what, do you, what are you going to do next? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but specifically podcasting. So I'm going to talk about okay. how, I, how I came across you. Okay, yeah. So, um, it's really interesting. Yeah, so on, on Twitter, mm-hmm. I saw this white lady retweeted saying, you know, Alex Alex Reads is amazing and you need to check out his podcast and whatever. I was like, who is this? guy who has, you know, the white woman co <laughs> <laughs> So I was like, okay, fine, let me go and check it. it out. And then the first episode that I listened to was with Angry Black Woman. Okay, yeah. And that episode... amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I think I'd seen her name kind of float around on Twitter mm-hmm. beforehand, but, you know, I tend to mind my own business. Yeah. But l- after listening to that, I was like, wow. And she was just, you know, talking. Mm-hmm. So I feel like of all the podcasts I listen to, there's always like a standout episode for yeah. me. And that was definitely one. And I did mm-hmm. go back and listen to other ones. Mm-hmm. Um... But yeah, just kind of hearing 
I think <coughs> I'll, I've, I will never forget that drive into work because mm-hmm. I was driving into work that day okay. and just thinking like, you know when you're on a place in your life that's a bit, mm, yeah. and it was very just inspirational in terms of like, her just saying like going for it and, yeah. Yeah. you know, speaking things into existence yeah. and her talking about like her cooking business yeah. and yeah. podcast with her daughter and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but yeah. um, I was like, no, nah, this is this is what I need to listen to. There's a lot of, I have a variety of, uh, I have a, Variety of podcasts that I listen to, but this one was one that was like, I was like, this is going to keep me grounded. Yeah, yeah. This one makes sense. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I'm glad. I'm, mm. glad that, I'm glad that it did that for you. Yeah. And the thing is, like, with the conversations I have, so, all right, so at the moment, the podcast is called What Matters mm-hmm. with Alex Reeds. Um, that is currently changing. Um, that should be changing. I don't know when this is going to come out, yeah. but by the time this comes out, it probably would have yeah. changed. Yeah. Um, but that it'll be changed to Time to Talk with mm-hmm. Alex Reeds. But the premise of What Matters. Um, at the time of, like, con- conception. Um, so me and my friend Clarissa kind of, like, we were bouncing ideas off. And we had a... Uh, we had, like, a bunch of names that came down to it. And then What Matters was something that she suggested mm-hmm. to me. And I said, OK. So I took it to a few friends and said, how did how does this sound? And they, a lot of them said, yeah, the, the What Matters is an interesting name. Like, mm-hmm. let's try that. So I went with that for, like, the first few bits. But And um, it was, a, it was like, trying to explore and find what matters to the people that I'm interviewing or I don't mean like the word interviewing but like having the conversation mm, mm-hmm. um and yeah and in that time it was like it was always it was a a pivotal time of me finding and exploring what matters to me yeah as well and a lot of these people I think I was just in a space of really learning uh, from these um these people my guests that mm. I was talking to um and there were so many things I learned like in the year that it was that I created it so I started it in October 2018 and in that year, it was like a huge learning curve. Just mm-hmm. all the stuff, like as you said, you but um, you listened to Wumi's episode. Yeah. Um, I had um, one of my old school friends, Mary Zane Kaba, like from Unconditioned Roots on Instagram, and like they're both young mums, and mm-hmm. it was just an interesting way. Just something for me, just because when you're younger and you see and you the idea of young mum yeah. or a young parent is like, oh, that's so far away from me. That's yeah. so so far away from me, but when you're older and people in your generation are now having kids, getting married, getting baptized, yeah. like divorcing, whatever they're going through. Yeah, I, I, I think it's the the divorce. The divorcing, I'm like, whoa. Yeah, splitting up with their partners, getting back together with their partner, doing all these different things, like just going through the ebbs and flows of life. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm blessed to have a lot of amazing, beautiful women who are amazing mothers around me. Because um, then, then I can see that they are subverting this um the stereotype that the media is giving them yeah you know oh you know single black mothers single ex you know they're just they're this and the other and these girls these women are doing like such amazing jobs and amazing work and with me um i was i've always been fascinated about her and her relationship with her daughter Mm -hmm. and you know it speaks to a wider issue a wider question about you know generations Mm -hmm. and how we are changing the way that we are kind of like raised, for example, yeah. and then what we want to do for our, the next generation coming up. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so speaking to her, finding and like what matters, what matters to her and about, you know, giving her child the best possible start, giving, having the best possible relationship with them. That is just one nugget of mm-hmm. the 30 episodes that I've done. Yeah. Um, for the, for the, for the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm glad that that one resonated with you. Yeah, with me. Um, it's, there's so many other ones that resonated with so many different people, but for yeah. particular reasons. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad. I feel like sometimes a podcast can be like a sermon. Mm-hmm. Now, I do not want to disrespect any religious leader in any way, shape or form, but it's like, you know, there's certain times where you go to church, um, for example, and that sermon that day speaks to you, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. So I feel like that's why certain people, like, if you ask them, you know, what's their favourite episode, it would be different for different people because it depends on what's going on with you at that particular stage yeah. in your life or what you've just come out of, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, yeah, no, it was... That was the one I was meant to to listen to yeah. on that particular, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, we can't really underestimate the power of conversation mm. and, like, just people sharing their experiences and their stories. Um, definitely can't underestimate that. So, yeah. Yeah. That's really important. Um, And going on from, you know, people just talking as a whole, I wanted to talk to you about 
kind of your mental health advocacy okay. and conversations that you've had regarding yeah. that and why why be like an advocate? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'll answer that question in two parts. Mm-hmm. I think like the, that's kind of the reason why the podcast is changing. Yeah. It, was, it always wanted to have a mental health focus. Right. Um, in that it wasn't like, oh, this is mental health. Like, what, what, what is your anxiety? So I said, like, no. It was more of a, let's just talk about, let's let's kind of unpack. Let's yeah. just, you know, this is a space where we can just chat and you can kind of, um, I've created a space where you can speak about your issues and the way, and your experiences growing mm-hmm. up and your experiences with your, with your child and your experiences of all that stuff. Um, but uh, it's changing to Time to Talk um, with Alex Reeds because I wanted to basically create those forums and those spaces for people to come and speak about things that they don't necessarily get the opportunity to speak about in a safe space, in a place where they can, they can wholeheartedly have those conversations. Um, and that's something that really was connected to the to my kind of mental health journey mm-hmm. at the same time because I found that um, a lot of uh, press and a lot of conversations around mental health are really stemmed around people not talking and having communication um, issues around the the stigmas and around all of those those kind of um, the barriers to, to you know unpacking their mental health and well being mm-hmm. um, and I know that personally for me. Like going through therapy, going having a close and important support network of amazing male friends mm-hmm. and amazing female friends, just kind of just just in separate ways, separate forms. But I remember reading an article and it was talking about um, how men don't have any friends, and they, you know, in a you know in a heteronormative relationship, mm-hmm. they tend to expect and require a lot from their female partners mm. and that and then like and I had a recent conversation with my dad about this and I was like you can't expect a woman to um be your everything like literally what do they have left they give mm. so much to their relationships their families so much is given mm-hmm. and then they have to give more to you. So they're left in a deficit yeah. and unwell and mm. unhealthy. Mm. Well, you reap all of the, the benefits, every, all the, benefits <laughs> yeah, of the, yeah. the love, the support, <laughs> yeah. the guidance, yeah. all of this stuff. And you're like, but then your children need that too. Yeah. And then the house needs that needs too. too. And yeah. then they need it too. Yeah, she so might what? need to go to, she go to work. Exactly. And, yeah, so they go yeah. to like, And I was like, you spend eight hours of your day and a lot of your time at work with a lot of people that you might not necessarily like or the people that become your work family or whatever, so whatever um, experience you have. And when I read that article, I was like, that is something because I was in the process of really growing and connecting with a lot of, um, with my friends, with my male friends. And we are vulnerable with one another. We are um, accountable for one another. Mm. We support one another. We have that kind of strength um, among one another so that that we can lean on. And we have the vulnerability to know that we can lean on someone, but yet, like, when they go through things or whenever we go through things, we can come to each other, mm. whether it be in the group specifically yeah. or whether, like, in our, in our group specifically or individually, Yeah, you know? So that was something that I really wanted to kind of, like, build upon yeah. and have that conversation to start talking about. That's really important. And yeah. I'm, I'm happy that you, that you and your friendship circle have decided to do that because mm. a lot of guys have friends. I I would I would say that they're friends, but they're more acquaintances. Like yeah. you guys go out together, or you might play games together, or whatever. Mm. You don't actually sit down and talk about your issues, or you talk about very surface stuff. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people are talking, but I uh, something that I got called out on this year was like you talk, but you're not saying anything. I was like, oh, Ooh, oh. see, okay, people come, people, people be know it. Like, and that's the, and that's the thing, and that's the, like, you know what I mean, and like. My friends, like we, it, when we know when mm. some when some shit's going wrong, mm-hmm, like we mm-hmm. feel it in the way that we that mm-hmm. we communicate something, mm-hmm. and it's by no, like we were like, okay, so what's happening here? Yeah. What's going on here? Yeah. Like we need to have, a, we need to all come together, whether it be over a monopoly or mm. food or something. We need to talk about like we need to create a space where yeah. it's fun, but also we need to talk about the shit. Like what is going on? Yeah. And then we will have that kind of space and that kind of conversation to have. Um, and yeah, like it's always good when, when when you try to, and it's so like when you know your friends or know people well enough that you can't really you can't really bullshit. Yeah, you can't really like because we we do put like men in particular they put a mask on 
um, to the world mm -hmm. of this strong, of this um, unbreakable, we don't need nobody, mm -hmm. I'm cool. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what is it to be the typical man? You step into a room, you're meant to be seen, you're meant to be heard, mm -hmm. dominate the conversation, do all this, like, interrupt everybody. And, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Be seen, be heard, be X, Y, and Z, which is fine, because that's mm -hmm. confidence. And that's just a confident person. Mm -hmm. I mean, man or woman. Like, mm -hmm. Do you like, you know what I mean? Like, I love seeing confident people walk in mm. and they're like, you know what I mean? And they're just living their life. But I don't like arrogance. Mm. Completely different things. But um, so when you're doing all that, it's a, and it's about trying to figure out exactly what it means to tap into the vulnerability side of you. Yeah. To then tap into and, you know, what and figure out and readdress what makes us strong. Mm -hmm. And just know that we need people. We need people. Yeah. And um, yeah, and that's kind of where the mental health kind of journey comes in. And I have those conversations. I was felt very alone for a long, a long time. time yeah. um, felt very different. I felt like I thought very differently. I tried to be one way, but then it, that didn't work out for me. So I had to kind of tap back into myself and really figure out. I, I want to stop you there like, yeah. and get you to say that again. Tap, you know. Yeah, tap back into, into myself. yourself. Yeah. yeah, because the thing is, like, I felt like I was mirroring a lot of. Um, people that I admired or that mm. I thought I should be like. Mm -hmm. And then you forget who you actually are because you're, 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 not, you're not even trying to be yourself. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? You're trying to be that person. And mm. because you're trying to be that person, whether that be that person online, whether it be that person in, in person, oh, yeah. you walk around a mess because you don't, you, you don't, you're, you're, like, you're just not even living, you're not even living your essence. Like, what is yeah. that? Yeah. Who are you? Who are, when no that's one's the looking? question. It's true. <laughs> who are you? Mm. Who are you when no one is looking? Absolutely. Yes. And that's the question I have to sit there. I've got that on my wall. Like, who am I when no one's looking? I think I need to put Same that question. up on my vision board yeah. as well. But um, no, that's really powerful. Mm -hmm. That is really, really powerful. And like, we are clouded constantly by different people's opinions and Absolutely. spaces. Like, it's when I see something, right? I'm guilty of reading comments, mm -hmm. right? But before I read the comments, I need, I, I've, made a conscious decision that I need to make a decision first, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And then I'll see, like, do people co-sign what I'm saying? But then it's like, why do I care if people co-sign what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how I feel. Yeah. I made a conscious decision not to read comments. I'm, I'm going to get there. Uh, yeah. I'm going to get there. Unless, unless, cause the thing is, unless it's like a funny video, yes. like, like that, I don't follow those kind of accounts on my Instagram, but I go to my Discover mm -hmm. page and then that's when I find them, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't need the thing is the thing about it yeah what I had to do I had to purge my Instagram account because I was like look I followed the shade bar I followed the shade room I followed mm -hmm. all those things and it was just a lot of like shouting and it was a lot it was very loud I'm a highly sensitive person yeah so I was it was a lot of things mm. happening right and I was like you know what it's fine I'm following 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 follow. yeah. cleanse that like you know quotes Sunsets. That's what I need. Mean. That's what I need to maintain peace. Because you have to yeah. curate your space online. Yeah. And then you go through, but, but when I'm when I'm feeling like ratchet, I'll go to my Discover page and I'll find like, the video. And go and find it, yeah. And that's fine. And it's absolutely cool to do that. Mm. But And then I'll read the comments when it's a funny video or yeah. something. But, you know, like, it's... I, I find it very difficult sometimes when people... They co-opt they co the opinions of others and they're not really thinking about their own opinions on it. Mm. They may they may genuinely have the same opinions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, that's fair. You, you're you entitled to it. Mm. Um, I find Americans are crazy <laughs> and angry at a lot of things that don't even need to be. Like, why are you guys that's angry? So it's eight o'clock in the morning. In fact, no. Like, you know, sometimes it's like, I'm like, there's a time difference here. Yeah. You are just waking up. You can't be that mad already. Like, mm. exclamation mark. Like, go and... I don't know, get ready for work know, or look after your kids or yeah, something. I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah. They, yeah. they do seem to be on 100 all the time. <laughs> all the time. Like, but, you know, sometimes that's fun. Sometimes that is really funny and I love it. Uh, it's, sometimes, sometimes it's a bit like... Uh, it's concerning. But it's just us because we're, we're, you know, we're British. Like, yeah, we're, we're like, polite. Yeah, well, we're, British. And... we're from here. Yeah. And it's like, it's very much like... Oh, oh I like how you made the... the... Yeah. Yeah, yeah like, okay. Because <laughs> like, we're like, you know, and... It's quiet, like we're on the tube and we don't want to be disturbed. You mm. know what I mean? But in America, they like sometimes they bust out in a freestyle and you're just like, well, who? like I'm just trying to get to my next stop. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? It's too but, much. Um, I didn't sign up for all of this. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, like curating your space is important. Mm. But yeah, man, that's why I don't read the comments because I'm just like, I want to make my, have my own opinion on that. Um, and I just go to my group chat and say, what do you guys think about this? And then we have a conversation there. Like, I'm not trying to. <laughs> have that conversation online because why does everybody why does 10,000 people need to be privy to a conversation yeah. or you know 
especially when it's something that I haven't really fully formed yet. Sometimes you need to take the time to reflect on a on a thing. I think hmm, I don't know how I actually feel about that. Mm. But you can. But you should be able to. You should feel able to ask the question. Yeah, and yeah. not everything needs an instant response. You know, so there's something like, for example, an album. An album might come out today, and everyone's like, "Oh, this was great. This was trash. This was whatever." And it's like, mm. yeah, like. Some of the best, some of my favorite songs were ones that maybe I didn't fall in love with straight away, but there was something going on in my yeah. life and that song came up and it reminded me and I link it to somewhere. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. people don't let things marinate. Yeah. No one wants to, I don't want to taste meat. Well, I, I don't eat meat anyway, only fish, but like when hey, I man, did. Snap, snap, snap. <laughs> See, Alex says we just, we get it. Like, yeah. you know? But when I did, I don't want meat that you just quickly season there and then and you cook it. Oh, no, exactly. like let that, let it marinate. marinate. Let you know, marinate, take the time. Season and... that well, cook it with love. Cook it with love. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. I feel yeah. you. I yeah. feel you on that. Yeah, so it's quick. People are too quick to make decisions. Go and worry yeah. about things that actually matter yeah. to you. Because I like what you said about, you know, I'm following all these different people. So on Advice with Alex, I followed The Shade Room and um, The Shade Borough. But mm. I don't really, I only go on, I only switch there to literally do with podcast stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And I went on The Shade Room the other day and I was like, I'm so far removed <laughs> from all these things. Yeah. Like, and, I'm, and I didn't die. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think like sometimes it's like people need that to mm. escape, or like, or just for consistent entertainment. Like, mm. and it depends on how people are, people curate their online spaces. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not here to judge people on what no, they do no, on, their, on their on their online space. That's absolutely up to you. What mm-hmm. you follow, who mm-hmm. you follow, why you follow them. Mm-hmm. Personally, I need quotes and sunsets. That's what I need. That's what I require. And I, I can't. And you know, people will scroll through my platform and be like, hmm. Interesting. Yeah. But it's quiet. That's what I need. I just need slow moving information. Mm. That's what I need. And the thing is, like, a lot of the social media is so quick. Everything is just there, 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 there. And you're mm. like, ah. And sometimes you get 10 times the amount of information of the same thing. piece of content and the same yeah. thing. And you're like, I've seen this like 50,000 times. And I feel like I've aged 80 years since, since reading it. And it's just, yeah. I, I think the biggest thing, aside from social media, mm. um, but obviously it's perpetuated on there, is people carrying other people's mess. Like, mm. I don't know if you've had a conversation with somebody and you've told them something, mm. and, like, and I can literally see it in their eyes. Like, you are literally carrying this on your head. I'm like, sis, I just thought I would divulge. Yeah. And you're going to go home tonight and that's going to keep you up. Mm. Something, do you know what I mean? Then That's why there's certain people I don't I don't tell things because yeah. it's like, you literally are gathering mm. and burdening yourself with mm. other people's mm. Mm. things. It's very important for you to say, mm. Yeah. And that's, again, that's another thing about um, the whole boundary thing. Yeah. Um, and mental, the mental health kind of situation and trust and whatnot. Um, who are you trusting your information in? And mm-hmm. who are you trusting your information with? Um, who can people trust you with yep. their information? Yep. Um, and I've tripped up. Like, I have, like, thought I was doing the right thing and it never happened. And it really wasn't mm-hmm. the right thing in the end. And I sat down there in the, in the couch with my therapist at this very same, in this very same conversation. And then she's been like, so. When somebody relays back to the the conversation or those kind of things to you, because you know when you when you're so centered in what you think you're doing is right, mm-hmm. and you know you're trying to have a, a a strong sense of self, and that's the ego, it's the child in you that's basically saying I have to be right because I don't want this, I don't want, I can't be wrong because I will get punished mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, and then the therapist will repeat back to you, said, so you did that, they told you that you did that, um, and then this was the result. Can you can you not see where? That was wrong, or can you not see? It? And you're just like being held accountable like, is hard. Ah! And then you're like, <laughs> like the car just breaks. And you're like, mm-hmm. yes, I can see where I was wrong. And then so I'm very so you know I become very aware of when yeah. I get into this situation. Yeah. So like if it's my close friends, as I said, like my group of my group of friends, um, they know that if they're speaking to me about something, they can. And I know that if I speak to them about something, we, we're, we're talking about it. Um, you know, it shouldn't have to go anywhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It shouldn't yeah. have to go anywhere. It shouldn't. It um, shouldn't. That's how it was originally. You spoke to your friends and your close, your close inner circle, whoever that yeah. may be, about your issues. And 
at the end of the conversation, nine times out of ten, you yeah. feel better. You feel better. Yeah. yeah, and then you know sometimes, like to some people's credit, it's like they can't, they don't know how to deal with that. Mm. So they can't set a boundary within themselves. So then they go and they speak about it to somebody else, mm. or they speak about it in a context that isn't necessarily explicit to you, about you, or something about that. But you know, like we, like it's about we're, we're in our twenties and we're, everyone's trying to get this right. Everyone's trying to get it right and mm. trying to trying to do the right thing and. You know, sometimes they may try it and it doesn't work, and then those friendships end, and those kind of, and then like arguments happen. They, and then if you don't learn, it's, for me, it's about learning from those things. Uh, like once you learn that in the past it didn't work, it didn't work, and then you can say, right, any new friendship I have, I'm going to go in like this, and I'm going to make sure that it's clear that I'm here and able to speak about X, Y, and Z. Um, you know. So, yeah, I think it's a, it's a learning process. All of these things are a learning process. So we need to be allowed the room to kind of make those mistakes. Mm -hmm. Make those mistakes, rectify them, yeah. and move on. You know, sometimes not all things are going to continue on forever mm -hmm. in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you, you need people for a particular time. Sometimes mm -hmm. they last for a long amount of time. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, things change. Things happen. Mm. Yeah, it's like so, yeah. what you're meant to learn from that particular experience. Mm, but mm, mm. we're humans, and we can be selfish. Yeah. We have to hold on to things. Yeah, and when you see it, and when you see it on those on those accounts, and people are carrying people's business and sharing it, and da -da 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 -da, it just becomes fodder for everybody else. And like, sometimes <laughs> you're just like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I mean, sometimes you're just like, well, is this how is how the, my information is kind of like being spread out? Mm. Everybody, just personally, I don't like that. But you know. Is what it is. Yeah. Some some people need that validation. Mm. It's up to them. Mm. Yeah. I think it's important for you to create a world. Obviously, that's very real, but mm. where one that you feel safe safe in. And unfortunately, that's part of the reason I think why a lot of people do have mental health issues is that they're in a, living in a world that isn't safe for them. Yeah. So they clamor in. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. It just yeah. It just really just goes. It really goes down to so many things. The environment. Mm -hmm. like the kind of environment you're in. So if you're at home and, you know, par parents, especially in African and Caribbean families, like a lot of their stresses come from the parents. And because we're still at home, so a lot of us anyway, are still at home, um, it's like we are still there. And we are they are we are their children. We will always be our parents' of course, children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we will never but we are not children. So then mm -hmm. that becomes the that becomes the issue. People want to do this, but mum mm -hmm. is asking for that and dad is saying this mm -hmm. and sister and saying that and mm -hmm. all of these different things. Um so that's the environment, but then obviously that's home, then there's work. Mm -hmm. You know, what's the environment like there? Are you not as you said earlier, you meant, you've reached the ceiling that like, or you've reached the limit at which you want to continue, whatever. Um you know, like, like, are your co-workers um, toxic? Mm. Or is it a pleasant environment? Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you're progressing? All of that stuff. Mm. And then we don't have emotional boundaries set. So then it's well, like... Because people don't even know how exactly. to... We're, we're not... Actually, um, one of my aunties, she gave me a really good book to read. So I I, I just do e-books these days. Yeah. I can't. Yeah. I'm not always granted the time to sit down and read. Yeah. So, um, but all about emotional intelligence and stuff okay. like that. So, What's the book called? Uh, I'll tell you at the end. Yeah, yeah. Um... But yeah, I've been kind of tapping into that aspect of me. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I was still at six and didn't grow past six years mm -hmm. old. You mm -hmm. know, that's where, I, that's where I was. Yeah. But kind of yeah. embracing that and growing that mm -hmm. emotionally as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, um, yeah, it's a, it's a process. And I think like, we, and again, it's just a thing that like we all need to, need to be allowed the time to, to grow and to make those mistakes and, you know, the whole mental health stuff, like, I mean, we all, we all have mental health. Like, you know, we, sometimes we have bad mental health, sometimes we have good mental health. Mm -hmm. It's the same way that you can have good physical health mm -hmm. and, good, um, and bad physical health. Mm. And um, Actually, before you continue, I want you to, to to dwell on that, good mental health, because I think that that's yeah. not a term that I hear. Yeah. I don't know if, if it's a term that's used frequently, yeah. but that's not a term that I hear. We yeah. often hear the kind of... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, I mean this is the conversation that I... These are the conversations I want to have because mm -hmm. um, when we think about mental health, everyone's like, oh, man, everyone... It's mental health issues. Issues, Mental yeah. health problems. Yeah. Mental health in the society, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And it's just like... And then, and then that kind of sprawls off into, like, like some diagrams of anxiety, stress, depression, mm -hmm. um... You know, suicidal thoughts, all of these kind of things. I'm just like, so that's bad mental health. Mm -hmm. 
And that's like when it's at its worst. Mm. It's at its worst, you're stressed. When it's yeah. at its worst, that leads to anxiety. When it's at its worst, it's depressive states. When it's at its worst, it's suicidal thoughts. Um, good mental health, you know, feelings of safety, mm. happiness, mm. like, you know, feeling relaxed in a situation, mm-hmm. not feeling like you're being intruded, intruded upon. Mm-hmm. Um, trust, trust, understanding, yeah. communication, yep. healthy communication. Yep. Um, all of those things. Like, you know, things that enable you to have good mental health, things like hugs, hugging pets. You know, sometimes that's a good, that's a, that is supposed to be a good form of like, you know, building good endorphins because, mm-hmm. you know, hugging a pet or hugging a person. Mm-hmm. You know, laughing, mm-hmm. all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and then, then a good self esteem. Because then you've got good self esteem, you got bad self esteem. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you don't, like, you know, a good feelings of self worth and value. And then poor feelings of, mm. you know, there's always a, there's a, the, there's a line. There's a scale, yes. But, but if the news and all of these places are just focusing on, um, just focusing on like poor mental health mm-hmm. and not kind of like expanding on, you know, all right, this is a spectrum. So let's try and make sure that we can like veer towards maintaining good mental health. Yeah. Then what are we going to do? It's like, you know, it's like focusing on the on the physical health issue and just saying, you know, like obesity. Everyone's obese. You know. Okay, poor, but what are you doing about it? Yeah, diabetes, <laughs> diabetic, all this stuff. Like this is it, this is it. But then, you know, with all those things, there are methods and treatments that you can do. Like you know, exercise more. Yeah. That helps your mental health as well as your physical health. Mm-hmm. You know, get outside, walk around, eat healthier. Mm-hmm. It, it helps your mental health as well as your physical. Mm-hmm. Like all of this stuff, we, they're not they're not making the connection between yeah. the two. Yeah. Um, and then, then you know, growing and then being in a big city like like London, um, it's, you know, your environment, as I said, like you're, everybody's rushing, everybody's trying to get somewhere, everyone's trying to do something, everyone looks so focused and determined to get to where they have to go, they're mm-hmm. not, it just looks, it's a high stress environment. Mm-hmm. And, you know, find, you can see in people's faces. Mm, yeah. yeah. And just trying to find that zen, trying to find that zen or that peace inside, just to be like, okay, I'm on this train. I'll just, I'll just put a podcast in and close my eyes because to be honest, I don't want to have to be dealing with Everybody come on. Like, oh my God, Some, somebody came on the other day and they bought on a Doberman, a big old Doberman dog. Like, this dog is like the size, the size of this couch. <laughs> um, and I was like... And it was I feel like, like you should have to pay for them. I was like, I, if it's not a guide dog, I feel like you should have to pay. Uh, no. Absolutely. So the dog, and it's just lying at my feet. Because it's really pretty empty carriage. Mm-hmm. And then so the band decides to sit there and he has this Doberman dog here. And I'm like, I feel very distressed. Right, right now, because the thing is, right, like I like I like I like Doberman, like mm-hmm. I don't mind Doberman dogs, but the way that the way the dog just came, you know, when you just, un, you just it, I did not expect this Doberman yeah, to be yeah, on here. Yeah. I did not expect the Doberman to be that big mm-hmm. either. So I was like, right, I am stressed right now. So I just need to maintain my cool, and I need to just like, all right, cool. Next stuff, I'm gonna get off and go into the next carriage, and then just but chill. You, but, but I had to sit down and maintain my cool because. I'm thinking to myself now, if the dog senses I'm stressed, it's gonna it's gonna start rearing its head and stuff. But and I was just thinking bare different things were happening. Yeah. The train is making noise. Yeah. The dog's alert and looking at all these things. I'm like, why is the dog on the train? Yeah. And it has a and like the lead was like more of, of a rope than it was <laughs> an actual lead. I was just so confused. But yeah. you mean the stress. <laughs> no, for real. But also like thinking of that situation, I think for me, if I'm in that situation, there's been a lot of situations where I've sat down and enjoyed something mm. and not said something where it's like, maybe if I had said something, I would have been able to avoid how I felt, how mm. stressed I was in that particular situation. Yeah. You know, even sometimes committing to something, saying, yes, I'm going to do this. And then it's like, oh, do you know what? No, if I do this, I'm actually going to continue to be uh, really, really so stressed out. And then saying no, but it's like, no, I don't let that person down. And yeah. it's like your mind... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I go through periods of high anxiety and overwhelm. Mm. So I'm, I tend to overwhelm myself with the things, and then when they actually happen, I'm like, oh, that wasn't so bad, yeah. was it? And I'm like, I'm like, I'm very prone to being like, oh, I'm not gonna do it now. I'm gonna cancel, or I'm very prone to being like, you know what I mean? And and, and I'm learning more and more not to do that mm-hmm. and just be like, hey. What is the worst case scenario that could happen? Mm. What is the worst case scenario that could happen? And why don't you want to do this? Mm. And if you and if I can sit down and have a legitimate reason for why, then I have to I make my decision and inform it from that. You know? So I'm trying. Yeah. Sorry. That's cool. Yeah. It's important. No, it's important to do that. To to because I'm I'm the same, you mm. know, like I will 
it, it's actually even uh, coming up to a year. So a year ago, this time last year, I actually ended up having three panic attacks in the space of a couple of weeks, two in one day. I've been there. Uh, yeah. So mm. the last one I kind of ended, I ended up in hospital and I was oh, wow. like, you know, that, that shook me up. And I, I've spent, if I'm honest with myself this year, kind of running away from it but then almost running towards it, if that makes sense. Um, and saying, do you know what? It is me in my head. Mm-hmm. As much, because I've I changed my environment, like, to the point where I was living in a different country at the time. I now live here. Yeah. I, I, I'm nowhere near that environment. But if that, if you're still stressed, then clearly it's not necessarily the environment. Mm-hmm. It must be you. Um <laughs> It's that, it's that of saying, you know, if you're trying to wish bad vibes away, if you say when you pray to God to, to get away, to take all the doctor people out of your life mm-hmm. and then you disappear. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that always kills me. Yeah, no, but it's, it's true. Like I was, you know, clearly yeah. creating, I don't know, just, I think sometimes not holding yourself accountable to certain things and out accountable, not even necessarily to somebody else, but to yourself, mm-hmm. you know, like you are really the master of your future and the master of your life. Mm-hmm. And the second that you, accept that then you start to hold yourself accountable and then you can start to carve a new life for yourself one that you actually want Mm -hmm. um and just recently having more conversations with myself in my head saying you know what you because i like to play things safe and i'm like oh this is too risky i don't think i can do it but in but deep within me i know i really want to do it you know and i will end up doing it at some point but it's like i could have removed all of this stress Mm. and anxiousness if i just you know, listen to my intuition in the first place and yeah. gone with that. No, that's a thing. That's a definitely a thing. Yeah. Like listening to yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. Listen to listening yourself. To yourself because like there was a bit there was a time when my head ruled my heart kind of thing. Like, you know what I mean? Like it really was like, I feel bad about this situation, but no, it can't be. Like, let's put that, let's let's put those feelings aside. Like mm. all of this feeling stuff, what's that? Let's put that aside. And um, logically, this makes sense because we can do this, 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 this. Oh, logic. But logic kind of just can get disrupted because yep. people, because, you know, emotion interrupts it. <laughs> and, um, and and your logic is not necessarily the same as my logic. Mm-hmm. And when they do not align, mm-hmm. that's, when every, that's when emotion arises and starts to shout yeah, yeah. and scream and cry and mm-hmm. do all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So... But then, you know, like, trusting your intuition is so important, mm-hmm. especially when you are unsure about a situation. Like, you've got to look at it and think, am I afraid of doing this or do I have a bad feeling about it? And then, again, sometimes they can be... Sometimes you don't know until you go. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, but um, sometimes you, you have to make the decision yourself as mm-hmm. to what that means. But, you know, like, it becomes a... It becomes a trial and process. Like, you need to make sure that... Um, that you're listening to yourself a lot more. Do, you know, you're in the process of making a new friend, for example, or, you, or you're embarking upon a romantic relationship. Does this person make me feel good? Is there something that, you know, is there a red flag inside of me that is cropping up? What is that red flag and why is it there? Mm. You know, did they say something that has reminded me of an ex or an old friend or my dad? Mm. Is it something that they mean? You know what I mean? Like, I'm not you things you're never going to realize until you explore it, but you just have to keep listening. Yeah, listening. Because you are your and reflecting. Yeah, you are your own like like barometer for all of those kind of things, you know. Like, um, and that's and that's the kind of like speciality that a lot of humans have, but but we've kind of been, you know, told to ignore those things. Yep. You know, like we've got all these algorithms and tech and everything to kind of like keep us so. Far Shut removed off. from the human, yeah, from, from the, from human the authentic human experience. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, if you don't feel good about a situation, there must be a reason why you don't feel good about a situation. And sometimes you learn too late, but also when it does happen, it's about figuring out what acceptance is and how you can be accepted and how you can accept the, the situation and the process, mm-hmm. you know? So it's like, yeah. 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 Yeah, nice. No, and, and it's something that I'm really learning and trying to kind of implement. Like, it's hard. Like, you know, I by no means have the answers or the method. I'm walking around here like, like I'm just, this is how I'm just no attachment. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I'm really trying, like, attachment is something that I'm really trying to manage and, like, kind of take a step back from sometimes yeah. or an, an expectation at the same yeah. time. Yeah. And, you know, like, it's one of those things that you have that 
for me personally, I have to learn and really try to do and actively try that each and every day. Mm. Because then I can say, I'm trying. Yeah, yeah. It's it's what you do every single day that's mm. going to create a change in your life. It's not something that you do like sporadically. Yeah. That makes um, a big change. And going off of what you said in terms of, you know, like logic meeting logic, um, I'm an empath. Like I got... I can, there could be a stranger in the room. Me if too. they're going through something, I can feel it. Mm. Like, I go off of people's energy. Like, yeah. um, so, and tapping into that is really, really important because if we put our emotions, I know a lot of people say, oh, you know, like emotions and stuff like that. But what I've learned, I think, is the reason why people kind of shy away from emotions is because they haven't mastered how to, what they mean, how to control them or, you know, how to tap into emotions and stuff like that. Emotions are really powerful and that's what makes us human beings. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we'd be robots. If we didn't have emotions, what difference would there be between us and and a robot? Um, So if you you tap into those emotions and you are more empathetic to other people, then that will increase or heighten your human experience. And it would reduce so much friction with people. Because, you know, sometimes when somebody comes at you, if you come at them... Because logically you're like, oh, this person's being rude to me, as opposed to opening up and saying, you know, that person isn't normally like that. Maybe they're going through something today, kind of feeling how they are. Mm -hmm. Then you can diffuse that situation and know that actually that's not, you're not directing that at me Mm -hmm. intentionally. It's just, yeah, you know? No, yeah, I hear you. I hear you, absolutely. It's about being able to take the step back and not centre yourself in that Face and also being very aware about what you will and won't engage in. Yeah. A lot of the time, like I said, I say to myself, self, <laughs> can you can you ride this storm? Number one. Number two, is this the hill you want to die on? Mm-hmm. Is this the hill you want to die on? You have mm-hmm. so much. Your grandma did not fly here from the Caribbean for you to, to for you to come and kill yourself in these arguments. So what is it? <laughs> what is the argument that you are willing to die on? And if yeah. this is the one. Go for it. Yeah. But if this is not the one, then leave it. Just like, you know, what would you do? Yeah. I'm not doing it. So there's a lot of these conversations that we need to have with ourselves, man. Mm. And so many times, like, you know, like, and when you are meeting people, particular perspectives, opinions, minds, different kind of backgrounds and stuff, experiences and whatnot, I try not to rise so much to everything because something will, will soon be revealed. You see what I mean? Like, if you're thinking, oh, he's ignorant, he's X, Y, Z. What is his lived experience? What is her lived experience? Mm-hmm. What does that look like? And it's not every time you're going to be, you're going to be going to have the sense of duty in yourself to be like, so what is your lived experience? You're not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, and you it, don't know. That, not everyone is owed that. Yeah, but, of course. But of what course. you can do is yeah. say, I'm not engaging in this conversation. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? I, can, right. I am not doing that yeah. right now. And I'm going to step back. Or you can go at them and, or you can argue with them and fight and then just perturb your spirit. Yeah, <laughs> so, like, sometimes after, after an argument, you're like, you're more you're rattled. rattled. You're rattled. So what did you achieve? Nothing. Yeah, it was like, yeah, and then you're, then you're down and then your mood changes. And then the, and then the thing is, it's, um, what was it? They say en- emotion is energy in motion. And if you're angry at an argument that has happened, that needs to be transferred. Where is that <laughs> being transferred to? So you have an argument at work with your colleague, ex friends it's a bad thing to do. do. You come home to your partner, your child, and you're angry that, 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 that the toy is there. Yeah. And you're shouting, you're trying to transfer that. That child absorbs it. Oh, mommy's angry with me. She, he takes the, she takes the thing, whatever. There's a real upset, crying, bawling. Then you're kind of absorbing the tears. And mm-hmm. then the, the father probably saying, look, why are you shouting at the child? And mm. it's being transferred. Yeah, all place. over the place. Yeah. And you know what I mean? And because we rise to all of that, yeah. you know, there's never the conversation of, okay, right, Alex, why, what's going on? Mm-hmm. That's never the conversation. Mm. That's never the conversation. It's always shouting about something. Mm. That's never really about that. Mm. Talking and not really saying anything. Yeah, as they say, see? Yeah. Talking about everything, but not the actual things. But not the actual thing. You know, yeah. avoidance. And you go to sleep, wake up the next day and say your sorries, maybe sometimes, or mm. just get on with your day and then everything is fine. Mm. But you have to remember that all of these things are transferred, especially if you have children and whatnot. Like, you're, you're literally enabling elements of the trauma mm. on them. Imagine if you come home and you're shouting at your child. They're upset. They feel they feel ashamed of doing something that they probably didn't realize. Many parents, I'm very, I'm big on parents learning to apologize to their kids and say that they are they were mistaken. Mm-hmm. And that is something that kids need to know mm. that like parents are fallible. 
they need to know that. Because when they grow older, like, you know, when you become parent pleasing as a child, you become people pleasing as an adult. And that is when you start to do this thing, when you start to say, look, you start to do all of that for other people. You start to be like, oh my God, okay. Oh my God, okay. Because you're trying to please that parent. And I said, the child within you stays the child. And then, you know what I mean? And then that child wants and keeps trying to do all of that. Mm -hmm. So, boy. Well, that leads us to the end of the show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, of note. course, lots of, like I said, I've never met an Alex I didn't like. Yeah. Um, you know, wisdom. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to need to look up, like, you know, with all of the attributes linked to the name Alex. But, you know. Uh, strength, courage, leadership, <laughs> guidance. Actually means defender of mankind, you know. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. So um, We are the defenders. Yeah. I would like to... <laughs> To give thanks to my parents for giving me this name. It's very powerful. You know, yeah. it, was a, it was one of the, the very strong thing my mother did. <laughs> picking that name. My yeah. grandmother did for picking that as my brother's middle name. And, you know, I want to shout out to the ancestors and for your eternal wisdom and guidance <laughs> on that. And, uh, you know, I could have I could have, I could have arrived here and I could have been a Carl. And then it would have been... I'm Carl speaking to Alex, and then yeah. this, we would, you know. Who knows? Maybe, it, maybe <laughs> like maybe it wouldn't have been the same. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm a fool. No, it's fine. <laughs> um, but where can people find you um, again? Yeah, yeah. So uh, catch me on uh, on Instagram at Alex Reads. Um, uh, depending on when you are listening to this, the Twitter account will be either What Matters W A R or um, T T talk pod so depending on what time you, when yeah. you're listening to this and yeah. when it's out and whatever it may be one of those things um same for the podcast um the podcast is time to talk with alex reed so that'll be on every um podcast platform that you, can, that you could possibly find yeah. and um yeah man follow follow me on the journey um it's amazing i've got some amazing interesting content coming for instagram mm -hmm. um got some amazing it's, um, content coming for the podcast so yeah looking forward to sharing all that with you guys and um yeah. thank you so much for inviting me on That's, i'm happy that you came i really appreciate yeah, it yeah, thank it's you really nice setup. Yeah. Yeah. um and of course guys you can follow the podcast at advice with alex on instagram and twitter and you can follow me personally at from alexandra x on instagram and twitter as well until next time bye